Welcome to lesson 4 tutorial 1 of our Python Turtle series. Um, in this lesson we're going to learn about functions and how you use them and why you use them. Okay, so to start with, I'm actually starting off with this is my solution for lesson 3 exercise 4 about drawing the house. If I run this, you'll see my little house that was drawn. There's the little door and the windows and the handles. Okay, so that's what I drew up um, for my for exercise four in lesson three. Um, but let's have a look at the code of this, because if you've done a similar thing, you'll probably find there's a bit of repetition. Remember the whole dry principle, do not repeat yourself. Let's actually read through this code here. And we're going through, created our, setting up our screen, creating our instance, we're moving a pen, we're drawing a square, we're drawing a triangle, we move the pen, we draw a rectangle, we move the pen, we draw a square, we move the pen, we draw a square, we move the pen, we draw a circle. Okay, so there's obviously some repetition in that. So let's see, what can we do? The two lots of repetitions we have is, is the moving of the pen and the drawing of the shapes. So let's start with the moving of the pen. And what I'm actually going to do is instead of repeating this, because I would have, I, when I typed it out, I didn't type it out, I just cut and pasted that stuff and put the different values in. So for example, if I was here, I just copied this code. I copy this code and I then paste the code down here and I change the values for the X and Y. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to create what's called a function. It's going to paste that code in there. And a function is a set bit of code which is put aside um, and you can call on it whenever you want and through multiple times throughout the actual program. So because we've done that cutting and pasting and cutting and pasting, that's effectively what a, a function can replicate. So we create a function by using the def or define um, keyword. We then come over, oops, we come over to the end and we put some brackets and then we have a colon. And like all colons, we are going to um, that means this indentation is relevant to that. So when I call this function, define move pen, if I call that by using, oh, it shouldn't, sorry, it should actually say move pen. If I copy that, and if I come down here where I actually copied that code out and replaced it in here, you can see if I run that, it will work just as well. Okay, because at this point here, at line 22, the program, Python will run down and it'll say, running down, okay, I'm reading down, 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 down. I, I know this, I've kept this in mind. I know this little here, it's a little bookmark I put in there. And then I come down and I hit this, said, oh, wait a second, I'll bookmark that. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to run this code. Right here. Now, at the moment, that's pretty useless because, at, because these values, these magic values in here um, don't change. Um, it means that every time I do a different value, I need to actually put a different function in. And that's not going to work. But what are these, I remember, getting rid of our magic numbers, what do these actually represent? Well, they represent the X and the Y. So I'm going to say, well, when you call this function, I want you to give me the X value and I want you to give me the Y value that we're going to use. So negative 100 is the X value. And I'm just going to cut him out and put him down here. And then zero is the y value. And in here, I say um, x and y. Right here. So again, that's a fair bit in there. Let's have a look and see. If I run that, will it make any difference? No, nope, she's still right. And it's still running and drawing my little house. So that's fine. But how about, okay. Let's actually see this and debug it and see if we can see what actually happens through the debugging process. I'm going to come along here. Okay, I'm just going to step through a fair bit here. All the stuff that we've done. Going down. Right. Now, here we are. This is the call to the actual um, function. So, you can see here it says, okay, move pen. Now, it already knows that move pen is a function. It says it over here in the variables. So I press F here. Oh, this is a value. Negative 100. It's an integer. That's good to know. And zero. And now it's going to call this. And what actually happens, you see this, is calling the separate function. And it actually breaks away from the main program. It steps away into here. And it says, what values? X is worth negative 100, because that's what was actually passed in. Z um, y is worth zero. So it comes along here. It says, pen up. Yep, I know all that. 
and then I say go to and replace the X with negative 100 and the Y with zero and then do the pen down. Okay, so that's how it actually works, how the computer steps through the processes. I'm just gonna stop that now and we're gonna come down and I'm going to remove um, the next move pen, okay, which is this one here, which is, so I'm gonna replace all of this with move pen and I've got my X and Y values in there okay um, and then I'm coming down to this one as well and I'm getting rid of I don't have to actually say the comment of move pen because the actual function code is telling me what the program is doing move pen for that so the function name is descriptive of what the code does and come and get rid of this and say move pen and I think that's my last one right okay so we've got that there so I've now got my move pen move pen in, and I run this just make sure it's going to run fine And what I've done is, I oh, can see it's worked like that. What I've done now, I've now changed it. So the actual code has gone from initially the code was 71 lines long and it's now down to 61 lines. So I've actually pulled that much. I've pulled 10 lines out. Um, right, so let's see. Let's look at the other repetition that we have. Right, it's also a great thing because if there's any errors, see, I know that move pen works fine now. I know that every time that I call move pen, it works well. So with any debugging happening, I don't have to worry about problems, um, any errors coming up. I know it's not gonna be in that section. So it's actually what you call modularization. It's breaking the program into little bits. You can test each bit, you know each bit works, and that's fine. Okay, so what about the squares? I've got what one, two, three squares here. So again, I'm just gonna copy this code here. I'm gonna bring it up to here and make it into a function. Now, generally, we put functions at the beginning of code. Um, why do we do that? Um, it's, it's just a style thing. It makes life easier um, for people reading your code because they know where all the functions are. You know where you can find it. You don't have to scroll through your code looking for it. So you normally have your imports at the top, um, and then you have your functions towards it, um, following that. So here we go, import for one in range four. Well, it's a square, so it's one and four anyway. Now, this here is two magic numbers. So how can I get rid of those magic numbers? So what does that represent? That represents the size. So I'm gonna come up here and say size, comma. And then I'm going to come here and this is the, well, I have to say 90, I don't need to because it's just 90 is 360 divided by the four, which is up here. And it's a square, so it's 90 anyway. But right here, so size is what we've got. I'm replacing size in here. And that is now, um, I come down to here and I say drawing a square. So I'm just gonna call my new function called draw square. And I'm gonna pass the size of the square, which is 200, which is for that one there. I'm going to leave the draw triangle. That's not in there either. Um, I'm going to come down to here. Uh -huh. I'm going to come down to here and say um, draw rectangle. Don't want that either. So I'm going to go draw a square. That's another one. Bring this in here. Oops. All over the place. There we are. Draw a square. What size is my square? My square is 35. Okay, moving the pen again. Drawing another square. And this one is again 35. Closing that off. And then I'm moving the pen again and I'm drawing my circle. Okay, 
So awesome. I've done that. I've moved the lines down and then it's now down to 52. Remember it started at 71 lines, it's down, down to 52 because I'm pulling all that repetition out. And again, because I know this works, because I know this works, I don't have to worry about testing it anymore. I know if there's an error, it's not going to be in here. And if I did make a mistake, I would only have to correct it in one location. So for example, if I had done this accidentally and I run it, and it's like, okay, well, oh, that wasn't what I intended. That's wrong. Okay, so I can stop it and go, where's the error? Okay, it's in my square drawing problem because that's the code that deals with drawing a square. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to check. Um, and the other thing you notice here that's more readable. What's happening is I don't have to worry about these comments. I'm going to say I'm moving the pen. I'm drawing a square. I'm drawing a triangle. Then I'm moving the pen. I'm drawing a rectangle. I'm moving a pen. So what I'm actually going to do to, to, to make life a little bit easier is I am now going to go through and actually put these two, um, these three, these three separate ones also into their own functions. Just because it means that I've got my separate code that I can check that it's actually working. Um, it makes it easy, easier to, um, it'll make it easier to, um, to read the actual code so I can follow it up. Um, so yeah, we're going to put the actual rectangle one in here now. So I've got two values in here. I've got the short and the long. So let's just copy that up here um, and put that in under here and say, right, you go away. Now you see all this here. I mean, actually just selecting it all and pressing tab to indent all those characters in one go. So for range one and two, this is going to be the short and this is the long okay or you might have other ways you want to do it, but we call short and long and so when i actually pass those values to draw rectangle i'm going to say so what's it want it wants long value first so that's 100 comma um and the short value next to actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change those around actually, so it makes more sense. Because if I wanna use a rectangle for another one, long and short is not really useful. So I'm actually gonna change this. This is gonna be called, so the long was that was up and down. So that's gonna be called vert. And this one is gonna be called um, hos for horizontal. Oh, hori horizontal okay so the short one was a horizontal one and the long one was the vertical one so again so I want the vertical when I draw a rectangle to be 100 and the horizontal to be 50 so okay that's that done so I've got draw a rectangle now so I get rid of those spaces there the next one I need to do is draw a triangle so I bring him in as well so again at the top up here put my code in change the comment into a function name open close brackets get all the code tab so it's indented so you can see, and you see it has also nested here so you've got a function which then has a for loop indented inside um, in, nested inside it so we've got the four triangle, one range and two, and I need to know what the size is for that. And he replaces by size, and I come down where it says rectangle, which was in here, and draw, draw rectangle, and it was 200 was the value. Yep, so I can get rid of that there, and that space there. And finally, my circle. So if I come down to here and just say, Okay, draw a circle and it's going to be size as well. And what I've got to put in here, I've got to put that value. And you are size. And I come down to here, which says draw a circle and I put my size in of five. And then hiding that. So you can see, okay, it's blown it out. It's gone out to 54 because I had some things that weren't 
I'm repeated. But now I also have a situation where I have got all these shapes that I can draw. So if I wanted to use this code to draw something else, I can call on that. So the two advantages of doing your, well, the three advantages of doing your functions. Um, the first one is to reduce repetition, um, which means that it's easier to maintain, it's easier to adjust, it's also easier to identify where the errors are. The second one is that being able to modularize your code, you can run code, you can know that that code works, and then you no longer have to worry about the actual, whether the function has an area. Oh, look at that, horizontal is missing. Vertical, um, draw rectangle, draw rectangle, horizontal, vertical. Um, draw rectangle missing one required. Do draw rectangle has got the 100 and it's got the 50 in here. Vertical and horizontal. Hmm. Why is it doing that? Let's see. There's a problem because I said draw rectangle instead of draw triangle. There we are. Okay, so let's run that again. So as I was saying, um, it allows you to identify where the errors are. It just hence that. It, it shortens your actual code and it makes it more readable. So instead of having all that in there, I can see the individual steps just by the names of the actual functions that are running. So there you go. That's how functions work. So now you can get there and look at lesson four, exercise one and lesson four, exercise two. Catch you later.